Alright guys, uh, welcome about the Turn Ministries Church tonight. Okay, we're few and over, but we're so much larger in faith right now. Give a shout out to YouTube and Facebook, the people that are out there. Um, but anyway, we're ending tonight a series that we started six, seven weeks ago, actually. Uh, seven weeks ago at Easter called Mortal Combat. Mortal Combat, alright? And we went through six weeks. Uh, we went through six weeks of the, of the most things that we struggle with the most. We went from uh, what was in the boat. We had depression. We had jealousy, we had anger, we had grief, we had all kinds of stuff that was in the boat. Uh, and now this week we ended up uh, with the full armor of God. And we'll talk a little bit about what me and my buddy Mike that's here uh, has been talking and that I've been battling with personally this week. It's about some spiritual forces and the shield of righteousness and all these other good things. But we'll get into that, all right? And then uh, also uh, next week we will also be putting on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, um, how deep is your well? Uh, David, the boy who would be king, who would be king, I will do a mini series with it. Don't feel led to do a mini series, so we're just going to stop it at one sermon uh, instead of going into many. And then I'm going to do the, uh, uh, this week I'm also going to do how deep is your well. But anyway, digging into tonight, Mortal Kombat last series, guys, I'm stoked, I'm excited about it. So we'll, we'll dig into it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, starting at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Um, and we don't have the technology to pop things up on the screen yet, but it'll be okay. We'll get there. We'll get it. What my headphones said? Oh, my headphones said, yeah. Uh, finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. I want to stop right there, right before we even get into what the whole armor of God is, for two purposes. Number one, it tells us at the very beginning of this, don't put halfway on. Don't put halfway on what God has intended you to put all the way on. Right. Amen? Don't put halfway on what God has told you to put all the way on. If you go into battle as a soldier, I was in the Army, I served in Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, over in Iraq in 2003, 2004. And anytime we'd go down MSR Tampa, uh, which was military supply route, and get bring supplies up to the uh, guys from the rear with the gear up to the front line, okay? We always went out and we had what we call the Army on Battle Route. We had our helmet, we had to wear the Kevlar, the, the big Kevlar pot on our head that make your head feel like 20 pounds, you know, you know, you put all kinds of stuff down. You had two canteens, you had a web vest, you had a full combat load of ammunition. You had your uh, guys carried regular weapons, and then you had your guys carried special weapons like saws, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, saws, 50 cows, Mark 19s and stuff like that, most times on trucks. But we never left out without covering ourselves Completely. As a matter of fact, the United States government did not have enough uh, vehicle protection gear and enough protection gear for the National Guard soldiers that had been over there. So me and my buddies in my unit actually supplied our own gear and our own bulletproof vests and plates and everything. And then we found a, a, a tank yard. We found a tank yard that from the first Gulf War it took place that we left all these tanks from Iraq and the United States were one of the biggest tank battles in history to take place. And we cut the sides out of the tanks and all the spare parts we cut out the tanks and we literally welded them to our trucks and we put sandbags across the windshields, across the floors, and everything we could do to make sure our vehicles was G to G, good to go, all right? So when we go down to MSR Tampa, when somebody would shoot at our truck, they'd be like, okay, we're like, blah, 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 and it's bounced off because we had tank armor, all right? So we was good, right? Let's, you was the guy standing up here with a 50 cal gun like I was, or my buddy Flash was half the time, depending on which one of us was driving, the other one was up in the crow's nest, all right? Uh, then you get picked off a little bit, you, you know, because you're a target then. But we never left out once with just half of our gear. We always had all of our gear on and ready to go. So in this first verse, God says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. If you leave one little thing that we'll go over tonight, if you, if you leave one little thing out, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Term Ministry Church, if you leave one of these little things off, then you're subject to get wounded yeah. or even killed spiritually by the schemes of the devil. Because this is how the devil operates, and I ain't got the exact verse in front of me right now, but there was this guy named Jesus, and for those of you, you know, he is the guy that walked on the water. Um, but Jesus, and he's, in, he, he's being tempted in the wilderness or the desert, 
And after he gets tempted by the devil, and the devil gets ready to leave, the Bible specifically says he left until the opportune time, which means he's going to come back when your guard is down the most. When he finds out, when he finds out that your armor, a piece of your armor is down, and where he hits you, he's going to hit you where he has to hit you. And before we get into these, I just want to share with you, maybe these last two weeks, he's hit me personally, personally in something I hold dear, okay? Something I hold dear in my life. My, my martial arts training means a lot to me. He's tried to hit my friends. We bounced that off. We had tank armor, right? He tried to attack the church. We bounced that off. We had tank armor, right? But then, then he tried to attack me through my marriage. We bounced that off. We had a little bit of tank armor going on. We was ready. We was anticipating. But when he shot the bullet through the personal life of me in an area that I didn't have protected, it was a direct hit. And spiritually, I crumbled. And I think that's what happens to us. I think that when he sees the opening, and it don't have to be a big opening to, to, to get through to you, all right? It just has to be deep enough that he can shove something into your life, shove something into your life, and spiritually ruin you. Going on in verse 12. For we do not rest against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against authorities and against cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. I kind of just want to stop right there for a second. And I'm going to go a little bit of Old Testament here. Okay, and I don't know the exact book or exact verse of my buddy here. He's going to go, but it'll be all right. I can't go some paraphrase. There was this guy in the Bible. He's praying for help, right? He's praying for help. And he don't seem to be getting his prayers answered, okay? And all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord comes and lands before God. And he says, hey, listen. Um, we was over here battling. But now I'm here. What do you need? Yeah, and, and he says, he said, you know, it took us a little bit to get through. We battled, I think, with the Prince of Persia. Battled with the Prince of Persia. So what is it you need? Call him first. Okay, go on, back, back. I think that spiritually speaking, even though we don't know all around us, there's a battle, there's a major war going on. I think it's constant. I think that I think that if the shield was removed from our eyes and the scale, so to speak, spiritual scales removed from our eyes, even in this room. We would be surprised the battle that is taking place between good and evil in this building, in this room, out here in this area, in this town, in the state. I think overhead, I think it's one big battle fight scene constantly. That's the way I think. And here's what I know. The things that bother you the most are not going to be against your flesh and blood. They're, when you say, what's well, going to be against I'm not talking about it being against your wife, your son, your daughter. That's a different style of being against your flesh and blood. I'm talking about it's not going to be something that you cut your hand on literally and be like, okay, that's what it was. That's what was bothering me. Now my hands up, now this hurt. No. The things that bother you the most are the things that will hit your heart. Mm -hmm. And that is the bullseye. If you look at any, I'm not a hunter because here's the thing. I used to hunt a little bit back before I went to Iraq when there was a big difference in hunting humans and hunting animals. I get that. But it puts a different perspective on the way you hunt things. Because I'm going to be honest with you, in the words of him and him, we all ain't nothing but cattle. Okay? So, in saying that, in saying that, I don't hunt. And, and my pastor, Perry Noble, he has this saying, he's like, hunters don't even hunt. It's an animal that's 100 yards away, at least 50 to 100 yards away, that is unarmed, has no idea you're in a tree stand looking at him, and you've got a scope. Come on, dude. That's not hunting. Strip down your BVDs, take a pocket knife, put it around, jump down on the deer, slit his throat, you're hunting. Okay? This is the way I look at it. This is how it is. But it always targets, it always targets, I just made a lot of hunters in man. Yeah, he's had a bad call with me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you go to the sporting section right now at Walmart, or if you go to Cabela's, or if you go to Max Pro Shop, and whatever, you go to see these targets and stuff that they got that you can use to shoot. And they even got like the zombie targets. They got yeah, all kinds of stuff. Like, yeah, like the CDC. Yeah, you know, I'm not getting into the whole zombie thing, okay? But anyway, um, they got zombie targets. They got all these different things. But everywhere you see, where's the main target painting it on the deer, the bear, the pig? It's on the heart. It's on the heart. And I think that we walk around constantly with a big target on our heart. And it's when we fail 
put on the full armor of God that can get our heart hurt. I mean, here hands are seen, you know, put on the, 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 the boots, but I, 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 I like to think that if I didn't have the boots on and spiritually, the devil stomp my toe and still won't hurt my heart. Because I don't know what my toes are going to represent, but I know it's going to hurt, okay? But anyway, we battle against spiritual forces. Now, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there that when they say spiritual forces, they're like, I don't believe in demons, and I don't believe in hell. And we have a lot of preachers today, a lot of preachers preach, in fact, that hell is not real. That hell is a place that we experience here on earth. They're talking about a burn pit outside of villages that, uh, that the locals will come in and they will throw their gar trash or garbage in their dead bodies and there's a pit. And it, people just believe today there's a lot of preachers that preach that there is no hell. I'm here to tell you there is a hell. And I'm here to tell you that there is demons. Now, you said you always got that side. I'm just going to go here and say this. You always got that side. The Bible don't say the word demons. KJV, you're absolutely right. It does not say the word demon not one time. It says the word devil or devils. It don't say demon, all right? Other translate or evil. Uh, later translations use the word demon. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I know there's angels and I know there's demons, and I don't get wrapped up in too much of either. I, I try to focus on Jesus Christ and understand that around me, that constantly that this battle, this spiritual battle is going on, is between angels and demons. It's not for, you know, you get these Facebook pictures and you see all this stuff like Jesus comes through the crowd and he clouds and he's got his fist back and Satan's like this, you know, the clouds, you know, whatever. And it's, it's, it's literally not like that. It's the soldiers of Christ versus the soldiers of Satan. The fallen angels that it speaks of in Ephesians, or Gen Genesis 6, I think it is, Genesis 6, I think, where they're cast, at, cast it out. Something like that. But anyway, so in verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God. See, there again, he says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil in the day and have done all to stand firm. In verse 13, he says it again. Take up the whole armor of God. I'm going to quote Perry Noble right here. Okay, Perry Noble says this, and I don't believe Perry Noble's God, but I quote my pastor quite frequently, okay? This is something I believe. Show me an area of your life you're struggling, and I'll show you an area of your life that you can place the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Show me an area of your life that you're struggling, and I'll show you an area of your life that you replace God. Why am I dealing with anger issues? Awesome. Do you talk to God? Do you pray to God? Do you seek quiet time alone with God? What's that have to do with dealing with anger? You bring yourself to the point where you rely on God and you talk to God and you try to stay calm with God and you see what God's word, what he has for you, you, in fact, will feel that home. Financial. Man, I just, financially, we're struggling. We can't, how can we pay tithes? I mean, we, we're in a situation where it takes every penny to earn money, pay bills. Don't bless me, heart. It's okay. Other churches don't sneeze because they ain't Pentecostal like us. It's okay. We're back to Pentecostal. Okay? We're back to God. These are people in question. Well, I did Pentecostal. No, don't worry, I'm not the fall before it. For all the Pentecostals out there, don't even know me. I don't care. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, financial statement. Financially, you're like, man, I, just, I can't afford it. If I afford to tithe, man, I, I ain't going to buy my Rice Krispies and feed my kids and, and all that. If you don't tithe, you're still not going to afford to. It's not until you tithe that God is able to move in your life. And it's not a money issue. People think that tithing is a money issue. It's not a money issue. It is a you issue. It is a love issue with God, and it's an act of obedience. Because God owns all the money. I think there's a Bible verse, I'm not, I'm not mistaken, but I think the guy that wrote this book, I think he's got a plane. I swear to you, I think it's an all-time bestseller. But I think somewhere he said he owns like, what, what was it, a thousand cattle, a thousand hills, a hundred cattle, a thousand hills, or something like that. Anyway, he owns it all. So no, no, no. He, he don't need money. He needs the obedience. Okay? So, so I'm struggling financially. Do you tithe? No, I can't afford to. You can't afford not to. You can't afford not to. You got the person that comes up, and I know like me and my buddies, some of my buddies in here, we battle depression constantly. But when we're battling depression, we always try to bring each other back to center. 
funny story, real quick, side note. Squirrel moment, okay? Here you go, side note. We was at a church, and uh, uh, we was at a church over in Beckley, and they was doing the, what's that funny thing you go to, sweetheart? Um, help me out here, Halloween. Oh, Judgment House. Yeah. Judgment House. And you know, yeah, and Judgment House, yeah, good job, man. We was at the Judgment House, and we was going through it from scene to scene to scene. There was this teenage boy, and he was with this girl. Up the There's a big group of them, like eight, 16 of us in this group, okay? So round number. Don't even know how many of them was. But this boy, he's my boy. And every scene you go into it, he's like, mm. and he's making a comment, like, yeah, I'm like, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. And we get to the hell scene, and the devil and the people shaking the cave, and there's people screaming, and there's chains. It's very realistic, it's very powerful. And I'm sitting there, and he's, I'm looking at all these other people. And they're kind of like shaking and they're like kind of filled with eviction of this guy where he's just like cracking like, yeah, you can't do nothing, yeah, you're fake, yeah, and doing all this stuff. So we was walking out of the hell scene, and I stood at the door, and I had a cane at the time. I was and had a meter foot. My buddy Josh was with me. And the kid comes out, and I look at him and I said, sir, with all due respect, righteousness is a filthy rag, and you reek of it. When it says breastplate of righteousness, it's not saying that your righteousness is pride. Yeah. It's not saying your righteousness is even you. Like the Bible said, it's His yeah. righteousness. Not that we should boast. Not that we should gloat. And not that we should take anything away from God. Mm -hmm. right. But pure, undefiled, 100% Columbia, grade A, straight up righteousness. Righteousness of God. Okay? Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. And when I told the boy, righteousness is a filthy rag and sir, you reek of it. He got a little bit offended. He got up in my face in front of the whole church, threw his arms out, and was like, what? You want to go right here? We'll go right here. He's up in my face. I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm a Christian boy. I got saved. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm like, you got saved. And I got a cane. I'm about right to put it upside your head. So they separated us. And come to find out, our, our tour guide through the thing and the pastor of the church, or one of the pastors of the church came to me and said, thank you so much. He's like, what? He's like, that's the senior pastor's daughter, and that's your boyfriend. And he knows better. And I said, well, you're probably beating on the parking lot. Josh is like, I got him. You know, like he can be in the parking lot. He said, well, he's out here. This is what we appreciate. But when I told him his righteousness was as a filthy rag and he reeked of it, I want everybody on YouTube and Facebook and even in here, most of you in here probably already know this, look up the terminology in the Hebrew, in the Greek, of what Jesus is talking about when he says, your righteousness is as a filthy rag. Here's the key pointer, and not to be a spoiler alert, think menstrual cycle. That's all I'm saying. Walk away from that. Okay? In verse, yeah, I pulled that off. In verse 15, it says, And his shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Always got to be ready. There's not one single moment, there's not one single second, there's not one single time in the day that we can sit back and say, I am good to go. I can put all my walls down. I can take all the armor off and set it over here. God has got me. And the devil's not going to attack you. Because if you take off the armor of God, you don't have God. And how can he protect you? Because every one of these things is symbolic to what he's telling you to do. He's telling you to pray. He's telling you to worship. He's telling you to talk to him. He's telling you to attend church. He's telling you to be ready in season and out of season. He's telling you to know what scripture and gospel says. He's telling you to know what he wants you to do. He's telling you to listen to me. He's Here's the thing. Not one place. We're about finished with the, the different pieces of the armor. But you know there's not one place that talks about having anything to over your backside. Mm -hmm. And I always found it funny that my pastor, Russ Hayes, at the time, said, son, you want to know why that is? I was like, no, why? He said, because Jesus has got your back. Amen. Yeah. He said, Jesus has got your back. He said, you're wearing the full stuff on the front. Nothing from behind you can come in. And you're facing everything head on. He said, what it is, what you see is what you get. He said, 
son, do me a favor. You've never done anything else. He said, you can never do it again. He said, but son, for the rest of your ministry, whether you preach Church of God, whether you preach in a Baptist church, wherever, he said, always, always, always let it be. What they see is what they get. And approach it head first. Where all of the armor of God. Now that's hard. Because this week, the last two weeks, I spiritually struggled. So at some point during my walk, the last two weeks, I said, man, this, this, this plate might go try to take it. I'll take it and set it over here. Oh, it feels like that. And all of a sudden, got me. And I'm wounded. And this week while I was thinking about this, in the last couple days while I was thinking about this sermon, I thought, it's kind of like Solomon. Falling on his own sword. When we take the armor of God off, when we get spiritually attacked, what's the first thing we want to do? God? <laughs> I don't understand. And he's like, hey, if you wouldn't fall on a trip and fall on your own sword, maybe, just maybe, I'd be able to help you. Verse 18, praying at all times in the Spirit. And they capitalize that. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to the end, keep alert with perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that my words may be given in the opening of my bodily to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. That I may declare boldly as I ought to speak. Now I want to stop. Uh, this is my last point. I thought it very funny. For which I am an ambassador in chains. Did you notice something? Nowhere in the armor of God did it say that you wouldn't get bound down, that you wouldn't battle depression, that you wouldn't battle. Uh, physical struggles, financial struggles, personal struggles. It didn't say that you wouldn't be attacked. It said, if you wear this thing, if you do what I have told you to do, depression, anger, jealousy, you know, grief, All laying around me. I wish they had a postcard and just thought of a cool illustration we could have done. We didn't do it, that's okay. It never says that you won't face the, the, the chains of life. As a matter of fact, it says, for which I am an ambassador in chains. I think that that's not to take anything away or add to it, but for I'm an ambassador in struggles, for I'm an ambassador in life because I'm human. Yeah. Because I'm human. In closing, there was two people walking on. One was Jesus. In closing the Mortal Kombat series out, one was Jesus. And he simply walked. The other was Peter. And he simply sank. You said, but he, you said he walked on water. He took a couple steps according to Scripture. So yes, he officially walked on water until he took his eyes off of God. And he sank. So what I want to ask everybody out there on Facebook, YouTube, and everybody here in the church tonight is how easy is it for us, even as Christians, I think we're all Christians in this room, how easy is it for Christians for just a split second to take our eyes off of God, setting our armor aside, and say, I got this. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Always have to be ready. When those moments come that we think that we can do it ourselves, we need to stop. And the big thing here at Term Ministry, we've been saying for a while now, is it a good idea or is it a God idea? Now, here's phase two of that. Is it a good thing or is it a God thing? I know it's not very complicated, right? I'm a simple guy. Okay, I gotta keep the beginning on down. So, in 
the sand. I want to challenge everybody. I want to challenge everybody that's out there. I want to challenge everybody. Okay? When you feel yourself getting ready to go through one of those times where you know that anger's come, jealousy's come, grief's come, financial hardships on the way. Um, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe um, you're taking on a church. Maybe it's a brand new church. I've got a friend that uh, was in Oak Hill and I was taking on a brand new church and that's a struggle. He's wishing he could come back to his church and he said, Nick, no thank you, we don't want you back. Okay? So he done a fantastic, fantastic job. Maybe it's a situation where you have a sick child. Maybe you have a sick husband, a sick wife. Maybe you lost somebody in your life. Maybe somebody that you, maybe it was a mom and a dad that passed away. Maybe you yourself are sick and getting ready to pass away and don't know you're right or wrong with God. No matter what it is, and you can't feel God around you, I simply want you to either email me, Facebook me, anybody that's on the Turner Ministries Church page, or just somebody you know who goes to church, I want you to be bold enough and courageous enough to set everything aside and pick up the phone, take on your computer, selfie it with a postcard, whatever you've got to do, but get it out there. Get it out there. I spiritually need and there's no shame in that. There's no shame in breaking down and saying, spiritually, I need a pick-me-up. Spiritually, I need a prayer partner. Spiritually, I need an accountability buddy. Spiritually, i got to have somebody that I can get to that won't be judgmental, that can take all of my trash and say, dang! There's no shame in any of that. Where the shame comes in is when you think that you can have Setting God aside, mm -hmm. saying, I got this, I'm going to make it through, and then expecting to see God work a miracle. Because yeah. here's the thing I know about miracles one day it is a two way relationship. Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus perform a miracle, did he just do it for me? Even with Lazarus, he had a relationship with him. Lazarus was dead. He'd been dead for three, four days. He was dead. And if you look up how they took care of people that was dead in that time, in that town, in that area, following his purposes, when I say dead, dang, they mummified the guy. And when I say mummification, they did the Egyptian mummification process. So when Jesus done the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, you want to know why they were shocked and why they were scared? What the thing about when they cut out his tongue and sucked out his brain? They mummified him. Look up what mummification means and how they've done it. That's why it was a miracle. He had a relationship with Lazarus. When he was on the road to see the little girl and to raise the little girl, what happened? Was the parents said, hey, come help my daughter. She's sick. Yeah. It's a relationship. The century served. We talked about the superior service uh, during this Mortal Kombat series. He said, hey, I'm unworthy. But his servants came and said, hey, this guy does everything for us and his son's sick. There was a relationship. Miracles work on a two-way street, and it's called a relationship. If you want to see God work in your life, and you want to see God move, you cannot chain him down. That's pretty much what I got. Guys, I appreciate you. I thank you. And I love each and every one of you guys. Look forward. How deep is your well this week on my Facebook and YouTube? Thank you so much. And we are at it recorded. Okay, good. We are at, uh, we are on School Street. Where do you want to say the different court date? Because it's an iPad Air, and iPad Airs suck. Um, and yeah, I said that. As long as you own them. Yeah, as long as I own them, they suck. All right, I'm a generation three talking about. But anyway, so in saying that, we are located on School Street, No Kill, and we are on the second floor, um, Saturdays at 6, 6 30 ish. For all those that like to be late for church, we won't start until 6 30 if you tell us you're going to All right, awesome. So, um, 6 o'clock youth group, 6 o'clock adult group, we'd love to have you. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, let's get your Bible at askturnagodly.com. All right, God bless you. Thanks so much, and peace.